Okay. Um, aloha. Good morning, everyone. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys had breakfast. Um, first and foremost, I'm Kolo Kea. I work for First Year Experience. I am one of the student ambassadors. And my first session today is OPE Student Success. So sit back, relax, and mahalo for coming. Aloha mai kako. My name is Kainoa. I'm the interim associate vice chancellor for student affairs here at UH Hilo. Uh, and on behalf of myself and my team, we wanted to welcome all of you parents to, to uh, For some of you, this is the second time, third time, fourth time maybe. Um, and for some of you, it might be the first time you're coming to college with, uh, with your child, with your student. So we wanted to talk story a little bit about what some of the student success uh, opportunities are on our campus. Uh, and then we're gonna kind of switch gears and also have you uh, have our career counselor, John Sakurai Horita, come and talk to you because it's never too early to talk about career development. Uh, they might be going, through, your students may be going through transition right now, just trying to get extra long sheets to live in the residence halls or buy their books. But we also like to include uh, and front load the career advising piece as soon as possible. Because when students are more prepared about or, or more aware of career development early on, then they are much more open to the many opportunities that we have on our campus, including internships, undergraduate research opportunities, and so forth. So I will. So uh, let me just explain what OPE is. So OPE is our retention brand on our campus, as, as Uti mentioned. Um, what that means is there are several different retention initiatives that fall under the shell or umbrella of OPE, uh, including first year experience. We like to include them under that because it's a high retention activity on our campus. Um, you may have already heard what they offer in terms of orientation and first year programming throughout the year to keep our students engaged and so that they're not kind of, you know, wandering off or kind of not being engaged on campus. Uh, we may have also heard about a, a program called Mentor Collective where new students are able to be paired with experienced students and they will then be in contact throughout the semester. If your students have any questions about anything that's happening on campus or deadlines or anything like that, then the mentor can also hook them up to resources or explain what all of that is about. Um, how many of you are parents to freshmen? Okay, so most of you, right on. Um, you may have already heard that our, we have a mandatory advising initiative called Freshman Eleu. Eleu means to be, um, kind of be on top of it, right? So we thought we want the Freshman Eleu experience for um, for our students because what they can do is, you know, they're hooked up to a professional advisor from May uh, and they are in contact throughout summer and then throughout the first year. So just so you know, for freshman Elil, your student will need to speak with their professional advisor at least once a semester. The point of that is we want to make sure that they are progressing toward graduation, taking the classes that are necessary in order for them to move forward, 
but also it's a transition thing. We want to make sure that if they have any other questions besides a mentor collective or first year experience that they have a professional on campus that they can approach and ask specific questions of um, and then they can kind of point them in that direction. We also have something called Student Lingo. It's an online uh, workshop, um, a, a collection of online workshops with different things like uh, how do I overcome math anxiety or uh, financial, um, financial planning, right, for students um, or how to do note taking. Um, as many of you know, the skills that students possibly develop and acquire in high school may not necessarily, I mean, they're good foundational steps, but they may have to adjust when they come to college because college is a little different. So what we like to do is have these available. They're not necessarily online. Um, they're not in person. We've learned that many of our students are kind of operating on different schedules. You know, like sometimes it's easier for us to do something at 12 o'clock noon and some of them are in classes, some of them are working out. So Student Lingo allows the student to access these workshops online anytime, 24 seven, seven days a week. Um, so if you have a student who's you know, kind of saying, I'm having some challenges with classes, note taking or test taking, um, please encourage them to come talk to us and or refer them to this thing called Student Lingo. Uh, we also have something under this shelf um, and it's, it's like a, a paired program. We have the living learning communities. There are six different ones on campus uh, and they're paired with a University 101 course. Uh, and that University 101 course is taught by a faculty member in that specialty area. We want to expose our first year students to our professors as soon as possible and to, and to have meaningful connections with them uh, outside, you know, in the classroom, but also this is an opportunity to show students that learning happens outside of the classroom as well. Um, it's also an opportunity to develop mentoring for faculty and students early on as freshmen. We are very active on social media and this is kind of a, a thing that we would uh, actually encourage all of you if you guys are on social media. Um, if you're kind of just curious about what's happening on campus, we post a lot of things like opportunities, deadlines, for example, which isn't necessarily, you know, privy only for students, it's public information. So what we like to do is we post it, it's kind of the, I'm giving you guys the, the skinny as the, as the parents. If you guys follow it, then you can maybe see, oh, there's a deadline coming up and you say, hey, I saw a peaky, there's a deadline coming up for withdrawal. How are you doing? You know, um, are, are, have you seen an advisor yet? You know, especially if they're having some challenges because we know that students disclose a lot and share a lot with their parents, even though they're in college. So this is a way for you to kind of stay in the know. The other thing that we like to do in social media is that we like, we speak like university language, right? Every place has a different language. And so what we like to do is we like to translate everything into plain speak so people understand it. We all know that when we move into a different location, there's a different language that we have to learn. And, you know, we, we have like, and we speak in acronyms and people don't understand what we're talking about. We're like, well, you got to go get a mod form and you got to take it this way and this way and you got to get this, you're so and so and so and so. What we like to do is break it down by steps so people know exactly what it means. And if people elect to do certain things, then they understand what the implications are. So for mm -hmm. example, if a student is wanting to withdraw from a class, we would likely explain what the process is, but then we'd also say, However, it may impact your financial aid. So we really recommend that before you do anything, please go and visit with the financial aid office and an advisor, right? So we try to break it down in that way because we understand that students just, they may not necessarily know that these things exist. Um, they're still trying to transition. So we try to like tell them to what they need to do or think, to think about as they're moving along. We also have something uh, every week we send out, the Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs Office collects all of the events that are happening uh, throughout the next week. So if there's an important deadline or specific activities that are happening for that week, we usually send it on Sunday at 6 a.m. And we send it to your students' emails. Okay, this again, this is not private information. All we're doing is just collecting everything um, and then sending it out so they're aware. 
Now, the other thing you should be aware of is that we also post it on our website so that if you're curious about what's happening on campus, you can go to one spot and we, you can see it because we post it straight on there. So again, it's just information that everybody should know. It's not anything specific to your student, just general stuff that maybe might be helpful for your student knowing where they're at if they're in contact with you. Uh, we have something called My Success that's a limited rollout and it's an early warning system with specific classes and what we do in that situation is we want to have the instructors tell us if a student is having challenges, if they're coming to class, if they would recommend that they withdraw from the class. And what that then does is it triggers a flag to their professional advisor. So what that means is if an instructor Instructor A says they have challenges with a student, it raises a flag and then the professional advisor starts getting in contact with them immediately to find out what's going on. And then if they start seeing a pattern of multiple instructors having challenges, you know, the student is having challenges in, then it's a bit more severe and we can jump in as soon as possible and get, get to the bottom of it and try to help them as soon as possible. Um, we do have, again, the OPE student success team, and we have a bunch of young professionals who are on there. Uh, and we're basically kind of the people behind the scenes. But there are a few things that they do uh, out, in, out and about. So I guess we will just have them introduce themselves. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Nikki. Um, I work for OPE. Um, I graduated from UH Hilo in spring 2018 with a bachelor's in administration of justice, a gender and women's studies minor, and a pre-law certificate. And shortly after I graduated, I got a job here. So there's a lot of opportunities that comes from this university. Um, I'm also currently in a grad program at Pepperdine Law, getting my master's in legal studies. So really, the opportunities that UH Hilo presented me opened so many doors. I wouldn't be in my master's program without my professors. <laughs> Um, we make a lot of retention efforts. So I know I met a couple of you. I see a lot of familiar faces. Um, we basically work out of the Division of Student Affairs. We work closely with the Division of Academic Affairs. So that would be your students, colleges, deans, division chairs, department chairs, their professors. And we, we work with them through their sophomore to senior year. Just because their first year, they're working really closely with their academic advisor. Um, we go through your student stars to make sure they're taking courses that applies to where it needs to apply. So if you're anything like my parents and they said, hey, Nikki, you have four years to get your bachelor's, you're getting your bachelor's in four years. Um, so yeah, I'll hand it off to my coworker. Aloha again. Um, my name is Ui. I'm another OPE retention specialist. Um, I just want to kind of tag along with what Nikki was saying is just how much opportunities UH Hilo has provided me as well. Um, what's cool about our team, Nikki, Ui, and Re um, myself and Reynel, um, we are all al alumni of UH Hilo. Um, and actually all three of us are pursuing a master's degree here at UH Hilo. Uh, personally for me, I came in from Kauai. I'm from Kauai, been here for about six years now, uh, majoring in psychology, minoring in Hawaiian studies, and I got a subject certificate in educational studies. Graduated fall 2017 and now I'm pursuing a master's um, in counseling psychology here at the university as well as working here at the university. Um, along my journey, I also um, did a lot of internships and, I, and it was through the university and through making these connections, um, I was able to hear about these opportunities um, out in the community such as Pipes and Kupu. Um, so I, I was able to kind of branch out into the community and take advantage of those opportunities as well which is also why we really like to plug our social media because um, we do share opportunities like Kupu, um, when, they're, when to apply, um, when they're opening um, pipes is a really well-established internship program as well. Um, so we really try to let all of the students know that, hey, these, there's really great opportunities here and just take advantage of it. Um, we also have right now, she's our transfer student specialist and Patricia, she's our peer assistant. So the, the kind of uh, the pleasure of hiring recent graduates, especially students who took advantage of all of the opportunities, is that they now are able to tell current students what's available. So I know Nikki had a, a, an internship as well. And so we want to encourage our students to take, you know, to begin engage, engaging in some of these opportunities um, so that they can enrich their experience and set them up for the next step. 
So just so you know, um, we, we love our offices because the AC is fabulous. Because um, <laughs> everyone's melting out there. Um, but we also love being out, out and about. So we are always, we're doing tabling events constantly. And our philosophy is we have to meet students where they're at. There are many times they're not going to come to an office because it's super intimidating and they're kind of walking in this big building and they're like, I don't know who I'm supposed to talk to. So we like to go to where they're at. We do, um, they've been tabling the, this past week. Uh, we'll be doing some tabling uh, during some events for FYE, for first year experience. Um, and then we're going to be doing, uh, if for seniors, we're going to be popping up in different locations to talk about the graduation application, when it's due, instructions on how to apply for that. And we, we sometimes go into like housing, we'll set up there. Uh, we were in the Student Life Center. We are on the Library Lanai, on Campus Center Plaza. We just kind of pop up in different locations. I am still trying to convince my team to just get on an elliptical and just, <laughs> just go for it and get next to somebody or help them spot lifting and say, hey, did you know that the graduation application deadline is this week, Friday? But they've not taken me up on that yet. We are also going to be doing registration pop-ups during the week of early registration in November. So we want to make sure that if students have any questions, even at like during the process, they may have met with their advisor, but if they run into like a little glitch, then at least we're there to help them. Uh, we also have something called Opihi Days. And so just so you know, um, there's going to be early advising the last week of October. Um, and then the first week of November, we're going to be having early registration for spring. So they'll be registering for spring classes already in November. The whole point is we want to make sure that when they go home and visit you or they go off on their breaks, that they don't have to worry about their registration. We want to provide them as much support as they can now to get registered for next semester and then go on and enjoy their time. Uh, so during that time, as I mentioned, we're going to be doing registration pop-ups. Um, in housing and also out on the uh, campus center pl uh, library lanai and then the following week we do something called opihi days and what that is is we invite all of the faculty and staff from different departments to sit out on the library lanai and if students have any questions like say for example they tried to register the previous week and they ran into problems or classes got closed or they want they changed their mind and they want to know if that class is going to count or if they might suggest other options, then the faculty advisors are there to help them. Um, so again, trying to bring all of these services out of the office, the great stuff that's happening in the office, but bring it out onto the campus, uh, onto the library and I, so students are, can access them and students are, um, and they're way more accessible for our students. Okay, so Nikki handed out a postcard. Um, we encourage you all to, you know, check in on our blog every once in a while. You may, if you're active on social media, may want to follow us just in case. Um, you may also want to encourage your students to follow us on social media. We are going to be posting on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and we've also got requests to post on the UH Kilo app, which many students have downloaded. So we will be posting all of the information there. Um, and then on the back side, I believe we also have some import the important dates and pop-ups that I mentioned, just so you guys are aware, okay? Any questions about Opihi before I hand it over to our amazing colleague, John? No? It's early. Did you guys get coffee yet? <laughs> coffee and donuts? Everyone's like holding up the coffee. Okay, we'll turn it over to John and we'll be around afterwards just if you guys want to come and talk story with us and we hope you're enjoying the time that you have here. Um, the precious time you have left with your children, uh, your students will, before you have to leave or go home to um, Waikia Uka or something, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much. I don't think this thing is even working. Don't you love technology? <laughs> um, 
I'm old enough that when I started, there was no technology. <laughs> uh, my name is John Sakurai Arita. I'm the career advisor um, on campus. Um, actually, my office is right next to the OP office, so I see them every day and um, swap stories with them. And no, I'm not going to get on an elliptical to do career advice. <laughs> there is no way. <laughs> so, um, we're kind of short on time, so I'm going to rush through this. Um, I'm always available for questions. Um, I don't know if this thing is working or not. Um, but the main message I have for you is this. If you forget everything else I say, remember this slide. And the slide is that Career development is a four-year process. A lot of people think, well, I'll wait till senior year, or I'll wait till after I graduate um, and come in. But really, if students plan from freshman year and move into their uh, sophomore and junior years, by senior year, they'll be set. They'll be set for careers, they'll be set for graduate school, or whatever their plans happen to be. I get a lot of students um, that come in senior year, and it's never too late, but it's never too early to come in. I'm going to be skipping through some slides for time because I know housing and dining is next after this, and that's probably more important <laughs> right now <laughs> for you. Okay, uh, I'm going to skip these. Oh, you're hint. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <You're talking laughs> <about identity. laughs> <You know. laughs> That's why she's my boss. <laughs> but but this time is confusing. It's uh, scary um, for you and for them. How many of you? This is your first child going off to college. Oh, a lot of you. So it. You know, it's scary for you, it's scary for them, it's confusing for you, confusing to them. Um, but what we're here for is to help make that transition a little easier for you and for them. Um, <laughs> and one of the questions that always comes up is major. What major do I choose? Um, what, that was cut off, but what are the opportunities for my particular major? That's always a question. You know, I was a sociology major. My parents still don't know what I do. <laughs> you know, the, the question was when I told them I'm gonna be a sociology major was what is that? What does that do? Now, granted, before I was a sociology major, I was a math major and then I was an education major. Sociology is my third major. And then I was a double major, sociology, psychology, and then four years are up and the university said, you have to graduate. You have enough credits. And so I graduated a sociology major. And then I said, what do I do with that? I went to graduate school um, and became a social worker. I got my master's in social work and, and went beyond that, was a social worker for a time. The key point is not to tell you that I was confused, although I was. Um, but the key is what you need to do, what the students need to do is answer three questions. What do you love? What do you love to do? Along with that, what do you do well? And the third is what does the world need? Because it's just, if it's just what you love and what you do well, but nobody cares, it's not going to matter. Or if it's what the world needs, um, but you do it well, but you don't like doing it, it's not going to matter either. So it's really a com combination of these three options. Well, um, you know, my, my nephew was in college. When my nephew was in college, my sister called me up and said, hey, you know, you're, you're in career development. Go talk to the kid. <laughs> you know? I said, what did I talk to him about? She said, he doesn't know what he wants to do. So I took him out to lunch. And I said, you know, Jeff, the key to career is you figure out what you like to do and you get somebody to pay you to do it. And so we're eating lunch and then he stops eating and he looks at me and says, so Uncle John, 
what are you good at? <laughs> and I said, my skill that people pay me for is I can talk to anybody, any place, any time about any subject. And that's what people pay me for, right? <laughs> um, if I know the subject, it's even easier, but that's not a criteria that I use. If I don't know the subject, I can still talk to people because I can ask questions and find out about things. But that's the skill that I've used throughout my career. Looking around the room, I'm the oldest person in this room, as is usually the case these days. Um, but I've used that skill throughout my career. Um, and, and what we help your students to do is figure out what do you love, what do you do well, and what does the world need? And those are the skills that they're gonna have to figure out because it's this section right here that brings out the career. Now, that doesn't mean that whatever they choose is gonna be their career. It'd be nice if careers were straightforward, start here, go to the end, finish up, retire, get a gold watch, all of that. That doesn't happen anymore. Careers these days are on the right. Twists, turns, um, and everything else happened. And so what the students need to do is to be able to maneuver through that. Because majors do not equal careers. How many of you are doing something that you thought you'd be doing when you were 18 years old? When I started college, I really was pre-med because some of you might recognize this. Who remembers Ben Casey? Okay, I see a few heads nodding. Ben Casey was a doctor on TV who in half an hour solved these big medical problems, solved the, the problems of his staff, and he drove a nice car. I thought, okay, I can do that. I can be a neurosurgeon like Ben Casey was. Um, obviously, that didn't work out for me, and, and I'm glad. Because people change jobs throughout their careers. Okay. People change careers three or four times in their life. And it's okay for your students not to know what they'll be doing 10, 20, 30 years from now, because if they think they know, they're probably wrong anyway. There's only one person in my life that I know that when we're in high school, is a good friend of mine. He said, I'm going to USC. After that, I'm going to pharmacy school. I'm going to be a pharmacist. He graduated from pharmacy school got a job at Long's Alamoana, moved up the ranks, was the head pharmacist at Long's Alamoana. He just retired uh, last year. Uh, he was happy the whole time he was a pharmacist. He's the only person I know that back in high school decided what he wanted to do, did it, and was happy. But then he's weird. <laughs> you know, he's a good friend of mine, but he's always been kind of on the edge there. <laughs> Most of us, don't do that. Most of us will go through the twists, the turns, the curves, and everything else um, that happen in life. Um, and so whatever they pick as a major, it's important that they pick a major because it'll give them some direction. It'll give them some grounding. But I can almost guarantee that whatever major they pick is not going to be the career the rest of their life. If they do, they can talk to my friend who's a pharmacist. Because right now, Institute of the Future has made a statement, 85% of the jobs in the future workforce aren't even in existence right now. And that's because who knows what we're going to be doing in the future. Artificial intelligence, robotics, scientific in, um, improvement, we have no idea what, what's coming up. And therefore, the students, what they need to do is, is hone their skills in the basics, the English, the history, the, the math, the sciences, and all of that, but also uh, hone their skills in creative thinking, problem solving, communication, and all of that, because that's what's going to carry them through the future. 
through our programs, there are several different programs. Um, as a freshman, they should take advantage of. We have information sessions, we have a career fair, graduate school fair, classroom speakers, and all of that. During the freshman year, what they're doing is just getting information. They're not applying for uh, career jobs, but they're going to the career fair to, to talk to employers about, what do you guys do? What does it take to get into your field? Those are the kinds of questions they wanna ask. Graduate school the same way. It's too early to apply to graduate school, but it's not too early to figure out, hey, there's graduate schools in certain areas. There's graduate schools here at the university, at Manoa, but also graduate schools on the mainland that do different things. So really the programs that, that we encourage them to do in freshman year is more exploratory. It's just gathering information. We also have a, a program called Focus 2, which helps students who are, who are wondering what, what kind of careers do I do? What, what is my personality? Focus 2 is an assessment instrument um, which can help them look at their values, their interests, their skills. Um, it's all online. They come up with a profile and the profile will give them direction to um, what types of careers does this fit? It also answers questions like, if I major in this, what kind of careers does that match? Um, you know, when we first installed this program, I, I helped install it and I tested it. So I went through and answered the questions just like me. Thankfully, career counselor came up on my list. <laughs> so I, I told my boss, you hired me for the right thing. <laughs> you didn't waste your time. Um, but also other things came up. Any assessment instrument a student goes through will tell them one of three things. One, it'll agree with them. For me, I looked at it, career counselor, good, that's been my whole life, so I'm glad that came up. It'll also come up with things that maybe when they look at it, they think, why is that on my list? For me, it was a clergy position. Not that I don't believe in that, but I'll never be clergy. No church would accept me as one. <laughs> but the role the clergy plays is a role similar to the role I play. I work with people, I help people, I console people, uh, not that they're in mourning or anything, but the role a clergy person plays is similar to the role I play. The other thing these assessment instruments can do is bring up something entirely new to you, something you never thought of. And that's what people oftentimes look for an assessment instrument to do. So this assessment instrument is available to your students. Um, uh, if you uh, just have them go to this website and access code Vulcan Pride, they can get right into the system. I also do one-on-one -on -one career appointments. We talk about majors. I help with resumes, cover letters, uh, interview preparation. Uh, uh, we talk about on and off campus job search. Now for most freshmen, they're, they're getting settled in. They wanna know where do I eat? They wanna know where do I buy my books? They wanna know where is this class being held? Um, but for some of them who are looking for on and off campus jobs, um, I guess there's a session today at 11 that's gonna talk about the on-campus jobs. Um, for, I would suggest if they're just starting out, on-campus jobs are, are, are a good place to start. Um, work study is not required for all jobs. You, they work up to 20 hours a week. Almost every department on campus hires students. In our department, uh, we have a number of students manning our front desk. I have a student I work with directly who does special projects for us. Um, the on-campus departments tend to be more flexible than off-campus departments. They know that these students are here to be students first and our workers next. So when finals comes around, we know they need to study. So we're flexible with their, with their time. Um, I put down the um, website for student employment because that's actually a different office from ours. But we also have off-campus jobs uh, through our office. Um, 
is through the College Central Network. Uh, these are jobs that are posted on our site uh, from companies off campus. How many of you are from the Big Island? Nobody's from the Big Island? <laughs> no, parents. <laughs> okay. Even if you're not from the Big Island, if you have a business, you can also register. It's free registration, and you can hire great students. I just wanted to put in a plug for that. <laughs> um, and when your students go home, their friends go home, they can um, get jobs there as well. Sophomore and junior year, so you're going to see a big difference. When they become sophomores and juniors, they start doing all sorts of different things. They, and these days, students do different things at the same time. Uh, they are definitely multitaskers. They don't have all those arms, but it seems like they do. Um, but they want, what they want to know is how do I do things and why would I do things? One of the things I would encourage them to look into is internships. Internships are great because it, one, gives them the hands-on experience. Um, it also gives them contacts in the field. You know, internships, even if it's a bad internship, it's still good because it shows them that you never want to do that ever again in your life. <laughs> you know? So even if they have a terrible internship, it's only for whatever time period it is, three months, whatever, they walk away versus if they went to a job and they walked away in three months, that's going to show up somewhere. If someone asks, how come you were there only three months? It was an internship. Oh, okay. So what you want to do is encourage your students to get an internship. And don't come up. <laughs> it's a little segue here. Segway. Aloha, I'm uh, Cheryl Ramos. I'm a professor in the Department of Psychology. And there are many opportunities for students on campus in different departments either to do internships, in psychology we call it practicum. Our faculty across campus are engaged actively in research. And one of the benefits of being at a campus like UH Hilo is faculty like myself rely on our undergraduates to work with us as research, research assist, assistants um, on our projects. So that's also a wonderful opportunity for them to develop skills skills that they can take with them and put down on their resume when they're applying to graduate school because they've been through human subjects training certification. They've learned how to do assessments with real life people if, if in the case of our cancer survivor research, uh, research project. So they're learning hands-on, they're doing things hands-on and gaining hands-on experience. Uh, in some of our departments, we also have peer advisors. Another opportunity for them to work directly with humans. Some of our research opportunities are with animals or um, laboratory specimens, but there's lots of hands-on opportunity experiences for students. As a faculty member, um, I think Kainoa mentioned it, um, and John talked about career development being a four-year process. What I'm looking for when I'm, when I'm recruiting for a peer advisor or research assistant I'm already collecting data on students when they are in my class. How have they done with the things that they are personally responsible for? Have they been on time? Um, what kind of work have they produced? I'm not only looking for their GPA. I'm observing how they're interacting with their peers and with other faculty members. Because if I'm re recruiting cancer survivors in the community, I need to know how they're going to be treated when they come in and say yes to our research project. So we're already collecting information and data on our students very early on. I mean, I'm not doing a tally of everybody. Um, but in my advising sessions, I learn about their work experience. And I'll give you the one example of Brenna, and I'll turn it over to John. I was recruiting uh, research assistants for our, our cancer survivor exercise uh, project. And... I talked with Brenna, and Brenna said, you know, I've never done research. I, I you know, I've, I've just been a receptionist doing reservations. I said, oh, awesome. We're going to be recruiting people from the community. We need to schedule your assessment time. You're going to be perfect. She managed all of our participant um, appointments and scheduling, and she was amazing at it. 
So the skills that your students will learn from the jobs that they have on campus or off, there's relevance to their applications and their desires to engage in internship, uh, in, in research, um, and other hands-on applied learning experiences. Great, thank you. Um, along with um, you know, all the experiences students get, employers also recognize this in, stu um, in students. The Chronicle of um, um did a survey and the top two values that employers look for, internships and employment, hands-on experience. And that's what they're gonna get through applied learning internships. They do look at the majors, obviously, and some careers you need to have a specific major, nursing. I don't want a nurse that never went through the nursing program <laughs> or accounting. I don't want my accountant not knowing um, how to be an accountant, but what they look for is the hands-on. So the internships, applied learning, uh, jobs on campus, off campus, all count, and, and it's important for them to go through that. Um, during their sophomore and junior year, some of the same programs are there, but what they do now is get more intensive about it. They're not just gathering information. They're really applying the information they're gathering to themselves because they want to know when they go to the career fair, they want to pick and choose employers that they want to talk to because they want to prepare for that junior year. Graduate school options for, for who, your students who are going to graduate school, they need to decide whether they're going to graduate school, why they're going to graduate school. They need to find the graduate school programs that are available. They need to evaluate those programs. They need to understand that there are strict timelines for applications and everything else that they need to turn in. And part of it is also their essays and letters of, of recommendations and everything else. In my, through my office, we help your students with, with all of these, taking a look at graduate programs, all through all of this, as well as helping them with their um, application letters and, and all that. So, so senior year, remember that? Senior year will help it make, make it a little easier a little more guidelines is still a lot of twists and turns, but hopefully by senior year, they have a map to their career. Again, similar program, senior year it becomes even more crucial. They're going to the career fair to meet the employers that they um, might want to work for. They want to present themselves. It's more of a marketing system for them at this point. They're presenting themselves to an employer. Um, the classroom speakers. The one thing that's crucial is networking. And this is where you can help them out as well. Networking is crucial no matter where you are. Um, if your students are not from Hawaii and they're going back home, it's even more crucial because they have to network long distance. Um, the middle is the students. The green is the friends and family. The blue is friends of family and family of friends, and that's where you can be helpful. It's not that you're gonna interview for your students, it's not that you're gonna give them the job, um, but you're gonna help them network and make the contacts that they need. Because through networking, they're gonna find out more about opportunities, they're gonna find out more about what it takes to be uh, successful in different careers. Um, and I would encourage you to help your students through this networking process. Um, we have several different job search workshops and individual meetings on resume, interviewing, networking, um, helping them create their LinkedIn profile, which if they don't have one, I would encourage them to get one. Um, because it all comes back to this. Again, if you forget everything I've said today, um, remember this slide, because this is what career development is, is crucial. Uh, what they love, what they do well, and what the world needs. If they can get those down, their career is gonna move forward. That'll change over time. So even after they graduate, if they can still take a look at this, um, it will be helpful. And that the message is that career development is a four-year process. 
And so I hope you encourage your son or daughter uh, to come in. Um, do we skip one? Oh, no, next. Oh, that's it. Right. Yeah, don't worry, it's under control. <laughs> As I tell my boss here. <laughs> um, I thought I had a slide with my contact information. I'm in the Student Services Building, um, room 203. Um, Please help have your son and daughter come in. If they don't come in, I'm all over campus anyway. I'm in classes, I'm at the OP days. Uh, they can't miss me. <laughs> so I, I'll bug them for four years. <laughs> but hopefully you will encourage them for four years and not bug them. Are there any questions right now? Yeah. If not, thank you. Oh, yeah. I do. Are you sending the same message to the kids? Are you talking to the kids so they know about you? Yes. Uh, yesterday we did a presentation for the uh, freshmen, and, and uh, this afternoon I've got the transfer students. So, and then throughout the year, as I said, I do classroom presentations, um, and I've had similar table events that they have. Uh, so, yeah. So we we do give the same message to students. But it always helps to have parents say, hey, did you go see the photograph? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, mahalo, Shara. Can you hear me? Is this, I'm not sure if this is on. Can you hear me okay? Oh, okay. Okay, perfect. Um, aloha kakahayaka. Uh, my name is Sherry Akau, and I'm the new director of university housing here at University of Hawaii at Hilo. Um, I'm going to bring up my counterpart, or at least one of my counterparts. Um, this is Will, um, or William um, Kelly. He's our new associate director of residence life, and um, we're here today to share a little bit about um, our program. Um, as those of you, how many of you have students that um, live in on-campus housing? Okay, almost all of you. Awesome. Um, we're really excited. Um, I am new to University of um, Hawaii at Hilo, um, but I've been in the field um, for more than two, a little more than two decades. I'm kind of dating myself, but um, I'm really excited to be here. I'm originally from Hilo, so I definitely um, understand a lot of um, what um, living in Hilo is like, and then also um, what the aspects of on-campus housing, which I am definitely passionate about and, and bringing that to um, the students that are living here on our campus. Just a little bit about our operation, um, and in a little bit, Will is gonna go through what programs we have to offer. We are what I call a 24-7, 365 operation. Unlike most of the university um, offices here on campus, we are probably one besides campus security that is on 24-7, 365. So even on holidays, um, state holidays, and um, uh, uh, Christmas, and New Year's, spring break, all of the holidays in the calendar year, we always have somebody on duty or on call and available to our students 24 seven. Um, <clears throat> we do have live in staff. We have three managers in our five, um, our five communities, but three managers that oversee these communities. We also have um, uh, William, who also lives in, um, in on-campus housing as well, um, along with our student staff that is peer leadership to the students that live in the residence communities. So we are definitely an operation that is available to our students. So no matter what time or day, um, there is somebody available to get a hold of the students, uh, excuse me, the student staff as well as professional staff is necessary. Um, as you know, there's all kinds of things that happen in residential living. Um, everything from roommate conflicts, um, student crises, um, there's life happens. Um, and we're definitely um, available to our students, um, but also skilled. Um, we do have professional staff um, that have signed up to do these um, duties, um, but are very skilled in addressing what comes up 
um, in our students' experiences with us. We're definitely focused on our student experience um, living in residential community. Um, we truly believe in the learning that is happening outside of the classroom setting. So um, as I mentioned, we'll, we'll talk about uh, what kind of programming aspects are available to our students um, as they're living here on campus. Um, one of the um, key programs that we have, which some of your uh, students may be living in, is Living Learning Community. Um, and it's one of our prized um, communities, being that that is where we partner with academic affairs. And there is a faculty person that is assigned to each one of our six living learning communities. Um, so there are um, two phases of that. In the fall semester, they're registered in a seminar type of uh, class in um, the fall. And then in the spring, which is my most favorite part, is where they have more of the experiential experiences where they learn about the AINA, um, learning about themselves, um, and really making connections with their peers. Um, and uh, studies have shown, based on what um, we did last semester, or last academic year, that 94% uh, um, of those first year students that live in that community academically have done better than the rest of their peers that were not living in LLC. So um, there's something that is uh, telling of that program, um, and we're definitely looking at ways of how to enhance that, um, those experiences. So if you have students that are not living in an LLC, um, and want to have more information about that, um, I encourage you to have your student connect with their RA um, or our office, and we'll be happy to um, answer those questions for you. Um, and uh, we do partner, um, and Sodexa will be up here in a minute. Um, all students in a residential um, community besides our on-campus apartments are required to be on a meal plan. <clears throat> and um, we do have um, five different options for our students. Students in Alahunua are the only students that are able, um, able to select Plan D. Um, that's specific to students in Alahunua. Um, but if Alohonua students want to purchase any other type of plan, um, in addition to D, um, they have the flexibility, but any student that is not in, L in uh, Alohonua would not be able to purchase uh, plan D for that specific reason. Um, as far as for um, any other type of questions relating to the uh, assignments itself, um, I'm going to hold those for now. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Will to uh, talk about our programs and what you can anticipate for your students to experience while um, they're living on campus with us. Good morning. Um, so my name is Will Kelly. I'm the uh, new associate director here. Um, I'm about to hit one month, so uh, pretty excited about that. Um, I'm from New York originally, and so how many people are not from Hawaii? Awesome. Welcome. <laughs> um, if you can't pronounce things, I can't either, so I'm going to try my best. Um, uh, so feel free to, to mispronounce or spell things to me. Um, that's how I've been getting around. Um, so uh, we have um, our resident managers um, living in uh, staff or in hall that I supervise, and then they supervise their student staff um, in the residence halls. Um, Sherry mentioned our uh, living learning communities, um, and they do specialized programs for those students, but the students not living in those, uh, in those halls uh, also have programming as well. Um, our RAs use the Aloha model, um, so very Hawaiian specific, um, and I'm gonna try not to mispronounce any of these words as I explain to you what they are. Um, so uh, the first A in Aloha stands for Akahai, which means kindness, um, and so it's about teaching um, residents to be respectful to each other, uh, learning about differences, um, and um, being kind to one another. The L is uh, Lokehai, Lokahi, see? Every time. Uh, that stands for unity, um, so coming together as one, um, and uh, not only um, uh, as, as students, but as a university as a whole. So supporting each other and, and things like that. Ola? No, Ola, O-L-A? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Stands for life. <laughs> so some of those life skills that students uh, may be learning in the, in the classroom or outside of the classroom while living on campus. So, um, you know, if they have a facilities issue, making sure that they report those types of things. If they're living with a roommate for the first time, how are they um, communicating with each other to make sure that they, they understand each other's schedules and things like that. Um, time management and balancing their, their academic life with their social life, things like that, um, all kind of fall under that uh, letter. Definitely gonna mess this one up. 
ho opa ah. And yeah, right? <laughs> Support. <laughs> H? Uh, ho opa ah. I was close. <laughs> Uh, that stands for support, so uh, supporting uh, students as they go through uh, different uh, transitional issues um, as they acclimate to the campus. And then the last one is Akamai, which is smart. And so academic skills, um, that could be um, career skills, uh, making a resume, things like that. Um, and so uh, all of our student staff provide programs um, uh, on a scheduled rotation and so basically there's at least one programming happening in each area each week um, and then they also do social programming um, for the whole building so getting the community together and, and interacting with each other um, in a fun way so that's a little bit about um, some of the topics that we'll be covering while they're living um, on campus um, and is there anything else you want to touch base on Oh, uh, one other thing is uh, student staff. So we hire lots of students to, to work on uh, campus. And so if your student's looking for a job, we'll be posting um, positions. Um, we have three within housing. Um, there's a, a mail clerk position, um, there's an office assistant position, and then there's the RA position. So um, if any of your students uh, have interest in that or you think they'd be good, send them our way and, and we'll walk them through the application process. And we'll just leave questions to the end. And the end, okay. So, so we'll answer all questions. We'll stay back, but we're going to pass it over to Sodexo. This is Reed. Thank you. All right. Oh. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Reed Cusano. I'm the operations manager for the food service here on campus. Um, we are a, we're Sodexo Campus Services. Um, so we do provide the main food service on campus. Um, I have a couple of my key staff here. So that's Julie Callahan. She's our marketing coordinator. Um, and this is Chef Rachel Erkin, who is the executive chef as well as manager up at Holiday Hall. Um, so as I guess most of you have kind of explored around the campus this, this, this week, we do have two main dining rooms on campus. So Campus Center downstairs, um, as well as Holly K. Hall dining room up by the dorms. Um, as far as hours of operation, Campus Center is open Monday through Friday. We open at 7 a.m. in the morning. Um, Monday through Thursday, we'll open till 5 p.m. Um, on Fridays, we close at 3. Holly K. Hall is open Monday, well, seven days a week, basically. Monday through Friday, you guys are open from five, five, yeah. <laughs> sorry, we just changed the hours a little bit this, this semester, but. So Monday through Friday, uh, which is 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., there is five to 7.30. <laughs> Monday through Friday, lunch is 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. Dinner, 5 to 7.30. Saturday we, and Sunday, we have brunch from 10.30 until noon. Saturday dinner is 5 to 6.30. And then Sunday dinner is 7 to, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. We also have another venue called Munchies, which is right next to Hale Ke Hao. Um, and they are servicing Sunday through Thursday, and it goes from 9 p.m. until midnight. So in addition to the main two dining rooms, we also do have a coffee cart. It's called Deja Brew. It's right outside of the library lanai. Um, we also have a Starbucks kiosk that is brand new. Um, it's located in the library, right on the right hand side when you walk in on the library. Um, currently all our locations will take the meal plans, points and whatnot with the exception of the kiosk. We're getting that system up and running and online. So within maybe hopefully two to three weeks, um, your child will be able to use their points if they have such a meal plan at, at the kiosk as well. Okay. Um, basically as far as how the meal plans work, if you guys have any questions 
um, so basically, if they have a traditional meal plan, um, all their meals that they have allocated for the week are used up at Hale Kehau for either dinner or brunch. Their points, which are basically like retail dollars, are used at all their locations like Campus Center, the Starbucks coffee cart, and um, munchies. Um, <laughs> um, I guess real quickly, just a little bit of background. Um, I've worked on campus for 25 years this past July. Um, Julie's been with us for about five years, and Rachel's our freshman. <laughs> so she just came on board with us about two months ago. But um, we, you know, we all have a lot of experience um, within the food service industry. Um, you know, I've been here the amount of years I have been. I've been able to see a lot of changes on this campus. Um, you know, back when I started, there wasn't that big building UCB back there. Student Services was in here. It was, you know, it was a small, smaller campus than what it is now. But um, through through all the years, we've always had a good standing relationship with with the housing department. Um, we work very much hand in hand with them. Um, obviously, with the relationship between housing and, and food service as well. Um, and you know, having Sherry come on board has been even better. Um, a great experience. She's worked with us a lot to get Hale Kehau up and going. Um, they got brand new flooring this this semester over the summer, um, and you know we're trying to uh, keep that relationship going with them and work with them on other aspects as well. But um, if you guys have any questions about the food service, about the meal plans, whatnot, we can answer that in the Q and A section. If not, like Julie mentioned, we do have brochures available. You please take one before you guys leave. Um, it's got a lot of information on there about the meal plans as well. So. Any questions out there? Okay. The question is, um, how how um, how does our operations work during the the breaks? Um, so the students are not required to um, move out. Um, the only time that I would um, be mindful of for your student um, is the transition from fall to spring. Um, we do communicate a lot of um, the information via email, um, and not always do our students check um, their hawaii.edu email. So if they haven't already done so, have them forward um, their emails so that way they can get communication um, from their hawaii.edu email um, from our office because that is our main way of communication. Um, we do into, uh, expect the students to respond um, to let us know that they're planning to stay in the same assignment for the next semester. We do have a new application phase that happens uh, for the spring semester, so we need to know what spaces are going to be available or not. Um, so as long as they respond to that email letting us know that they're returning for the spring semester and they don't have any requests to move to a different assignment, then um, as long as they respond, they're good to go um, and they can keep their stuff in their assignment and they can go about their winter break as, as they please um, and come and go as they please. Um, students that are in housing that want to move to a different assignment, whether it's to a different room in the same hall or a different room in a different building, they do need to still respond to that email letting us know. Um, they are the only students that will be transitioning um, for uh, obvious reasons because that's what they're requesting. We try to get those requests um, and let moves happen before the student um, leaves for the break. Um, so we'll work with them on scheduling what that check-in and check-out looks like for them from the, uh, for the new assignment and then I'm checking out of the old. Um, any student that's withdrawing at that time, then um, we work with them in that process. Um, they still have to notify our office and letting us know, again, still responding to that email. And then, of course, our new students um, go through a different process, but similar. Um, so that goes for pretty much all of their breaks. Um, I'm going to uh, pass it over to Sodexa to answer the uh, coverage on during the breaks. And what that looks like. So during the breaks, um, 
primarily during the winter break, Christmas break, um, all our dining facilities do close. Um, during the spring break, which is in March, we do offer kind of like a, a survival kit, basically. So we, we put together like a box with, or boxes, sorry. <laughs> um, basically food that they can either microwave or shelf stable stuff that, you know, they can utilize over the break. Um, we make sure that there's enough food to get them through each day of the break until the facilities back, open back up. Yeah, so during the Thanksgiving weekend or a break, we're open Thursday, that Friday and Saturday. So yeah, and we do a pretty big spread for Thanksgiving, um, Easter as well. So, yeah. 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 Definitely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, if you guys are planning to visit with your yeah. child, you're more than welcome. Yeah, definitely. And semesters, the semester end is a couple weeks after that. Yeah. Oh. And I just wanted to, oops, sorry. Um, I just wanted to also add um, in the, on the housing residence life side, um, what we are going to try to do, um, because um, not very many students are around, they usually leave to be with family and friends during those break periods, but we try to find out who's here, um, and then we do like a little program. Um, we've done also um, shuttles to Target and Walmart, um, and they just have to sign up, so we'll get that communication out um, once we have an idea of who Who's, who's around just to provide support because we also recognize that not all of our students um, have the ability to go home to be with family and friends or have anyone here on island. So we try to uh, provide that support and, and within our own community um, celebrate those, um, those type of things throughout the, the academic year. So I'm going to pass um, the question to this. It goes around. <laughs> it goes around the like a November ish, if I remember correctly. Um, and if not, um, uh, if you want to call our office, um, we can let you know kind of where we are. Our website also has information relating to like what that timeline looks like as well. So those are also helpful tools that can help you just figure out where you are in the process, where we are in the process. What's that? You pass that information here. Newsletter. The, okay, thank you. Um, the relationship that um, I'm still navigating um, on our campus, um, so I can definitely reach out to them because that would be, yeah, good information and a partnership I care about. Yes. Oh yes, menu. Okay. So your your question was regarding the posting of menus, correct? Okay, yeah, so our menus are posted every week um, on our website, which Julie, Julie handles. So, um, if you grab one of our brochures, you'll have our website address, and then you can go on there every week and see the menu for the following week. And sometimes they're out two weeks ahead. Sometimes. <laughs> we work on that. <laughs> that answers your question. Okay. Hi, in the back. That uh, I would recommend if, if that's something that you um, want to purchase for your student, um, I would go ahead and, I mean, it doesn't hurt to have one. Um, we do have protocols in place um, based on how we respond to um, hurricane, natural disasters, um, and or any type of emergency type of situations. Um, so um, we are still coordinating that um, as a university as well within our unit areas. Um, but we, it's not that we're not prepared, which is that uh, the details of that, I'm still navigating myself, but I do know that 
um, that we have a plan in place. Um, and, and if we need to initiate that, then we're going to go ahead and do so. Um, but as far as for what you think that is um, necessary for your student, if that's something that you feel that gives you a peace of mind, I, I would as a parent, um, to be quite honest with you. But it's not recommended. Um, and I haven't seen that necessarily in, in my experience uh, being in housing residence life in, in my career. So um, I think it definitely it's a personal choice more than it is a requirement at this point anyway. Thank you. Yeah, of course. So um, the first week that I was here, uh, there were two hurricanes scheduled to hit the island. Um, <laughs> uh, and so that was the first question I asked in our staff meeting. I was like, what do we do in a hurricane? Because it's coming. Um, and they all laughed at me um, because <laughs> uh, they're, they're so used to it that it, uh, it, it's second nature to them. Um, so, um, so I think that they're more prepared than that might have sounded. Um, and uh, the island itself is really uh, equipped to handle lots of rain. Um, and so they're, they're not so worried about like flooding or things like that. But um, this came up yesterday when we were talking to some of the students. Um, there's a building by um, K How that's labeled emergency kitchen and they didn't know what that meant. Um, and so that's our, our space that we can provide um, meals out of if there's like a blackout or, or something where the dining staff can't get to the, the campus, we have that as an option for them. And we do work with Sodexo um, in, in that response as well with the emergency kitchen. So, any other questions? Yes. Yeah, I was um, wondering about um, do you have a reasonable amount for like gluten free options for some of the schools this year? <laughs> um, so, we have a really good allergy program here, and I handle a lot of allergies in my entire career. So we definitely um, take allergies very seriously, and we have different pans for gl gluten-free cooking because there's cross-contaminations that occur on all cooking services. So whenever we have a severe allergy, we um, always cook it in a separate pan with separate utensils. We have separate cutting boards and things like that. We do ask if it's a very severe allergy like celiac disease, um, that we get a doctor's note so that we can make sure that we have special care taken towards that student. Um, we will cook, if the student has celiac disease, that's very severe. Um, compared to a gluten allergy, where any cross-contamination will send that student to the hospital. So for those students, we prefer cooking the food in the back, and we will have that food prepared for them. Um, so we just want to sit down with students like that so that we can make a plan for them and make sure that we cater towards their needs. That's the only thing that we ask. Um, kids who have normal allergies that our gluten we are prepared on a daily basis for that so they just come to the dining area tell the serving attendant that's at the station I have a gluten allergy and we can cater towards them immediately right on the station it's just the severe ones that we take extra caution with I've also seen just to add to that um, because of our size um, the um, the dining staff um, that's um, in the dining hall um, get to know the students and so they don't even have to ask after a certain point it's just that they just know you because they know the student um, and they already made that connection which is I always love seeing that um, when that happens um, and they get to know one another um, and that's the beauty of um, on-campus housing is that you won't make those kind of connections with um, our our staff or our, um, our vendors uh, for them nevertheless, but um, the care that goes into that, um, I've seen um, the work that they've been doing up there since I've been on board, um, and it's just like amazing. So and I just trust and know that the care that goes into that relationship is really on a personal level um, because that's the kind of uh, care that, that we provide, um, and I'm confident in saying that, and I think that Reed and, and Julian and Rachel can account can, can to that as well. So, more questions? Yes. Hale kehawa. So the question is, um, can we take food out of Hale Kehau back to the dorms. Um, and that's perfectly acceptable. We do have a takeout program. 
Um, it has been abused in the past, so we require one to go box that we provide with a 16 ounce cup, I believe, mm -hmm. um, and a lid. We require that they take the food out. They cannot um, come in, eat a meal, and then take food out as well. Um, so you have to close the lid to the to-go boxes, and then you can leave the premises and go and eat elsewhere. Um, we do require that hydro flasks, um, any outside to-go containers stay outside or at the door because there's cross-contamination that can occur. People don't always wash their hydro flasks. And if you take that and put it up to our soda fountains, you can get other people sick. So we do not allow hydro flasks in Halekehau. Does that answer your question? Oh, and whole fruit, yes. Um, we do have a whole fruit section that we allow people to take one fruit. What time could you get come in for takeout for lunch? Um, so lunch is what eleven to to one. So they can come in any time in that two hour period and come and grab the food. Same for dinner, yeah. Any time that there's a service period, they can come in, um, grab, swipe their uh, card, and grab the to go box. Yeah. Depending on what her class schedule is, I mean, and depending where on campus she is as well. I mean, we have, she can also come to campus center to grab something. We have a lot of grab and go type items. So if she's on a tight time schedule, she can just come in, grab something real quick and then head off to class. Um, that's also what our Deja Brew coffee cart basically is set up for is for quick convenience as well. So depending on, you know, what her schedule is, the only difference is she would be using her points versus her. Her, 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 her meal plan. Hi. Yes, yeah, so from fall semester, they will transfer over to the spring, but after the spring semester, if whatever they have left is, yeah, is no. Yes, every transaction that they do with points on the receipt provides their balance. And if throughout, sorry, <laughs> it's something that just comes up. Um, if throughout the semester, if you have any questions about their balance, like say they're going through it really quick. <laughs> um, you can always call our office. We can run a detailed report and show you all the transactions that they've done. Um, not, not saying any of your children will do this, but we have seen in the past, especially freshmen, because a lot of times this is like their first real budgeting experience. And they have all this money in their meal plan. They go crazy in the beginning, first two, three weeks, then come October, they've got like $5 left and we got parents calling us, what's going on, what's going on, you know, but we, we can bring up the transactions, we can do a report, you know, and we can see just how much they've spent each day. A lot of times what, what does happen is they're trying to make friends in the beginning of the semester, right? So they're they treat their roommates, they treat their friends. Before you know it, it starts snowballing and now they're treating five people at a time and points is gone crazy. So it, it might be something you want to talk to your children about, you know. Um, we, we do want to make sure that they do get through the semester. However, the points can be reloaded as well throughout the semester. We do run specials on the re points refills. So certain times of the semester, um, we do offer like a bonus special. So they get if they purchase so many dollars worth, they get an extra 15% or whatnot. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. So can they use the check card anywhere on these, in these places or do you have to have cash? No, we credit debit is fine as well. Hi. So um, the points carry over to the next semester, but they're like on a weekly basis. If you got, if my son's got like the 10, 10 meals in the plan, um, no. So with the traditional meal plans, whatever is allocated for that week, he, he needs to use up that week. Um, so, you know, if, if you find through the semester, if it, the meal plan doesn't really suit him, 
then there's a possibility to change. They would have to go see housing and make the change. Um, you know, it does happen. Sometimes people select meal plans where there might not be enough meals in a week for them, or there might be too much. It, it, a lot of it depends on their, their class schedule too. If they can get to lunch on a certain day and use up that meal plan up at Hale, the points, or I mean, the sorry, the meal at Halekei Hall or not. So it's kind of a feeling out process in the beginning, a lot of times. And then um, is the buy-in option like for Yeah, but yeah, you yeah, can pay a door price. price. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. There'll yeah. be a door price. We are open to the public, so we do accept door um, anybody in at the door. You could live um, here in Hilo and just say, "Oh, I want to go to Halikai How for lunch today," because you're in the area. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? We do label gluten-free, um, dairy-free items, and then every day we have what we call a jump start, which is just a little pre-meeting with the staff, and we go over all the ingredients so that the person serving that food knows exactly what's in that, in those items, because we do serve a lot of items with soy, um, and there are soy allergies. Um, we have there's so many allergies out there. So we just need to make sure that we tell all of our servers because they are not cooking the food and they don't know what's in there because they didn't make it. So we um, go through every day with all the items. And if there's any time that there's um, a server that has a questionable um, allergy that they're really not sure about, because there are allergies out there that nobody's really heard of, so I'll be there available, um, and my sous chefs are always available to answer those questions as well. Any other questions? Oh, we have one over there. The survival kit for spring break has um, usually been $75, but they can use their points to purchase it, and it gets them through the spring break week. Um, we don't do that over the Christmas and New Year's break, though. There's pretty much the kitchens are all shut down for that time. We, that would be on, excuse me, the question was um, what do students do um, for food? Um, and as we uh, touched on a little bit earlier, um, we don't have a lot of students that is around during that time. And so Sodexo does offer um, what is called the survival kit, but, but for only for the spring break. And during the holidays, um, the student, it's on uh, the students um, to determine what that is gonna look like for them. We do have our on-call staff available to our students 24 seven. Um, so our office hours and our kitchens in the communities will be available. Um, and as I also mentioned, we are gonna um, offer um, uh, trips to Target and Walmart so that they can get some items to you know, prepare um, during that period of time. But because the number of students that are on campus during that winter break is so minimal, um, it's really hard to um, have an operation open at full um, of a full serving um, hours um, because of that. And so um, I've learned anyway during my first um, go around um, for the holidays that that is what um, we do here at our university. Um, and students have been able to navigate that very easily. Um, and um, we provide the support in housing um, if there's any concerns um, that we can help out with. So. Um, I hope that answers your question um, in that way. It's um, it, as long as they are responding to the emails and letting us know that they're planning to return for uh, spring semester and whatever their plan is, whether they're staying in the same assignment or if they're moving, um, that's um, it's going to be a switching over to the spring um, housing charges, um, which will be the other half of um, the, the rates because we, we do charge by semester. 
So, and there's in, in between, there's no additional charges now. Any other questions? Yes. That's something that I want to implement um, as well. Um, I haven't seen this, that, uh, that being a program that has been offered here, um, but that's, that's definitely something that I do want to um, offer and seeing if there are students that will be interested. Most of our students these days um, with the generations that we've been working with pretty much figure that out on their own with the type of services that is offered for transportation. Um, but it's something that I'm considering um, but we'll, and we'll be working with my staff to figure out um, if that's something of interest to our residents. And so we'll see how that plays out. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. So the kitchens in the dorm, <clears throat> they're open during the, the Christmas time, right? Well, it's open during the, when we have our office hours. So if a student wants to use it uh, for whatever reason, um, then they just need to let our staff know um, because we have our on-call staff available. So if, if for some reason it's not open at the time, they just need to get a hold of the, uh, the building staff and then we'll go ahead and assist at that time. Okay. Yeah. The, yeah, we're open 24 seven, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where are the rules changing with masks? Like, John, we just want to ensure that our daughter has no access to lunch. Um, and so we instructed them to come back and get the masks. So yeah. when and where here in Pentecost? You can come to our office. Um, we're located in PB11. It's ca also called Redwood City. It's a, literally a red building um, that is located on this side of campus off the walkway. Um, so you'll see PB11, and um, as you walk down the, um, uh, the pathway there, um, you'll see student housing um, to the right. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's September 3rd, I believe, is the last day to change that uh, meal plan with our office. So um, just be mindful of that date if it doesn't happen during your time that you're here on our campus. September 3rd. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry, say that again. <laughs> they can have their student ID brought to the office that's downstairs. It's a dining office. Downstairs in Campus Center dining room, walk all the way through the dining room, and you'll see a table set up in front of an office door. And that's where we're taking the IDs and charging their meal plan onto their IDs. Any other lingering questions? Yes. Do they get a discount at Walmart or Target, a student discount? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, not that I'm aware of. So, the 5% if you have a red card. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the app, get the app. <laughs> it's in addition to. No, yeah, not that I'm aware of. Any other questions? Yes. I'm gonna have read, I, I missed last year's one. Um, I have a more of what happened in the housing um, just from what I've told, but Reed will probably have a. <laughs> um, okay, so to be totally honest, being out in the middle of the Pacific, it feels like we're a big bullseye, but um, we do get a lot of scares, I'm not gonna lie, but we've never, knock on wood, I don't know where it is, but. Um, <laughs> we've never had a direct hit from a hurricane the, the the worst situation we had was a few years ago where we got we took a direct hit from a tropical storm um that being said it was no joke though i mean the winds were still strong there was a lot of rain there was a lot of damage done not on this not in town but out in the puna district um a lot of trees went down basically that whole community lost power for a good couple weeks I would say um, but that kind of situation is more of an outlier than than what we usually encounter I would say um, kind of in part due to how we this islands made geographically we have these two massive mountains that kind of help redirect stuff so to speak so a lot of times um, if you 
keep up with weather and news and whatnot. You know, initial tracks will kind of take storms close to our island. Um, and more times than not, these storms will veer off either to the north of us or to the south of us. Um, and, and that's just how it works because of our, our location. One, um, because of the mountains, two, there's a lot of wind out there offshore that kind of helps shear storms off. And um, as well as the ocean temperatures get warmer as you get closer to, or colder, I guess, warmer, colder. <laughs> Sorry, it's one or the other, but I mean, they, it, it, basically what it is, it helps kind of take apart the storm. Um, I think the other kind of bigger, not bigger, but the other kind of situation that we kind of got to watch out for here is because we have active volcanoes on island as well with both Mauna Loa and Kilauea. They're quiet right now, but that doesn't mean anything really. I mean, they could, you know, they could go off at any point. Um, obviously last year we had a fair amount of action. We had a couple of good sized earthquakes. And again, the Puna district kind of took the brunt of it. Um, so basically I would say just, you know, keep yourselves updated, especially if you're not from Hawaii, you know, just keep an eye on the weather over here. Make sure your, your child as well keeps up to date with that. But um, the, the school, as well as the local news, they do a pretty good, they do a very good job, I would say, of keeping people updated, informed. Um, you know, I think if anything, we, we get a lot of rain. Normally, anyway, Hilo is, <laughs> is wet. Um, but I think like um, William mentioned, our island, because it's so young, there's a lot of rock under us. So water drains very well here, unlike the other islands or, elsewhere so you know we got a lot of lava rock under us so water kind of just goes <laughs> but yeah i mean just just make sure your your child as well as yourselves just kind of keep an eye on stuff um i think hurricane season runs for another to another couple months and um other than that it's fairly mild. I mean, you know, temperature swings aren't that much over here. I mean, as you guys have probably all encountered, humidity is killer. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's Hawaii, but we're pretty comfortable year round. Just to add, <clears throat> excuse me, on the housing end, um, we do, I, I receive um, updates from um, the person on our campus um, that works um, with our civil service um, defense um, office um, within the state of Hawaii. So we have like the hands-on and somebody there that reports information to um, those of us here on campus. And then what I will do is I will work with my staff to make sure communication goes out and that we have a plan in place. Um, usually, um, if we, like last year, Hurricane Lane um, was one that had impacted um, our community. And from what I was told um, was that um, the students were just kept indoors um, and we had programs going um, and just a lot of community um, time together. So we just wanted to make sure that our students were safe and that they were not, you know, going anywhere. So we kept them busy um, while they were indoors and here on our campus. Campus. Um, <clears throat> classes were obviously canceled um, as well, um, but again, the communication does go out. Um, if your student hasn't done so already, and you can also do that uh, this as well, is that there is a UH app um, on there, um, and there's updates on there that can be um, communicated out, um, that, but you can stay in touch with what's happening here on our campus. Um, and information on our website um, is also another avenue of where <clears throat> I found uh, that goes out into um, the community um, relating to things like that. But there is a, a good response um, that I've seen um, before I got here. So it's just more of, of what we're going to continue to do um, and enhance um, based on um, what things that um, my staff and I are going to be bringing into providing that support during those times because it's realistic to what our weather conditions are here um, when it happens and if it happens. Yes. <clears throat> the, yeah, it's any type of like natural disaster that impacts the island, um, we get the updates on that. And so depending on what it is, um, it was, we don't want to alarm students for no reason. So I monitor that um, and I work with my staff to provide whatever support pieces is necessary in our community. Yeah. I saw I hadn't. 
Oh, oh, oh right. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That is something that I am going to be doing with my staff um, and still navigating. Um, I've been 10 months, I'm 10 months in, um, and that is part of um, what I am still um, navigating um, and will be enhancing that as well. So there is a plan in place, um, but I'm going to be probably enhancing that um, to see what, what works within our operation. Um, and so to answer your question, yes, there is um, to be in practice of that. I don't know if that has been something that has been done in the past, um, but it's something that I want to instill moving forward. So there is a plan. I just don't know how much it's been practiced in the past. Yeah. Yeah, no, understandable. Yes, no, I completely understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> when we build community with our students, um, that's part of the the conversations that um, that they'll be having, and so um, and that's what we really strive for: building community um, and connections within those communities is something that we take a lot of pride in um, and we hope those experiences are just going to be what we're hoping to be for your students um, in the long run and so it's it's our kuleana or our responsibility to help them learn their life skills um, a lot of times you know I always like using the analogy that you know just put you put a paper in front of them to sign um, or you know it's not that you just go ahead and sign because that person is telling you to do that but to understand what that impact is and trying to ha um, have those teachable moments with your students and helping them prepare as you now young adults going into the next phase of um, their lives and preparing them so that that way once they are done with their education or their um, college career here then they will be able to apply those skills um, once they leave here so that's always what the goal is in housing and residence life and we care about that so um, that way we always say to um, uh, there's a time where you cut the umbilical cord and then we take on um, that um, and we're not babysitters We're here to help enrich their lives um, to help them with those life skills So we're hoping in you know in the experiences that your students have that's what's going to happen while they're here with us so. But good question understandable <laughs> Any other questions? Yes Mm -hmm. um, I, I would recommend um, if your student doesn't have campus security's number um, on their cell phone, um, I always encourage our residents um, to put it on there. I, I had it, it was the first thing that I put on when I started here. Um, they are visible um, and available to our students. We, um, that is the office that we work very closely with um, in a partnership that um, we um, maintain um, over the period of time. Um, and because I'm 10 months into um, my new role here at the university, um, we are still um, trying to figure out what the protocol is so that way um, the relationship um, is where um, we need it to be um, because it's important and because safety is our number one thing for our students. Um, um, and you're entrusting us to make sure that that is um, that's why it's key for us um, academics of course is up there too but for housing safety is the number one um, thing so with that it is that part partnership with campus security um, and uh, we're the ones that are up at two three in the morning um, so because we're a 24-hour operation the uh, understanding each other's protocol and making sure we're on each other's page is something that is important to me as well as um, our chief of campus security so um, as we um, navigate that and, and what that connection is, um, I think that we're going to see a lot of that um, results coming from those conversations that we're already having. 
So yeah, they are visible and available and they, um, they have a lot of connections um, like um, Sodexo, um, as I was mentioning earlier, um, our students get to know our officers um, as well because that's how visible and we do have officers that are dedicated to housing and residence life areas, um, including across the way. And because we do have live-in staff, um, that also makes it um, more peace of mind. And so at any time that you want to get a hold of your student um, or you're concerned about that, we do have limitations to what we can share um, due to FERPA, um, but certainly um, call campus security um, and they will get you connected to one of my on-call staff and we can assist. And we've talked to many parents um, that have called um, just to, if you're worried about it, like if you haven't heard from your student for, X amount of days and you know that's not normal, I um, mean you get worried and you want us to do a wellness check, we can do that for you. Um, so just stay connected and let us know how we can help and then we'll, um, we'll take on uh, whatever that response is from there. So. So with devices, I don't have it by memory. Does anybody know it? Okay. <laughs> I just look for a campus security and press. Thank you. Eight oh eight. Can you repeat that number? Can we repeat the number? Does someone know what the number? Hold on a second. <laughs> Thank you. Did you hear that? I actually don't know the answer to that, unfortunately. Um, the question was, um, what is the response time when the emergency button is hit? Does anyone that has been here for more than 10 months know um, what that response time is? Um, I have a, a student in the back there. Two minutes. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, it, it's really loud. Yeah. The emergency boxes, they're around campus. Um, I'm not sure if it's connected to campus security as well, but it should be. Yeah, okay. Does that answer your question? We have live-in staff that will be um, responding to the issue, if not already at the issue itself. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. I, if you have any further questions, feel free. Um, we're going to hang out for a little bit as well um, as Sodexo, so um, feel free to come up or contact us at our um, contact information on the website. Okay. Thanks so much. Have a great rest of your day. Well, thank you very much for having us here this morning. Um, I represent Student Health and Wellness along with Andrew, Frank, and Heather. We're all going to be talking to you this morning a little bit about what our program encompasses. Uh, we have a three-prong approach to the health and wellness of the students here on campus. That is counseling, medical services, and also preventative um, 
information and activities. And so what we're gonna do today is take you through each one of those areas and just give you a brief overview of the services and the activities that we provide so that you get a better understanding of what's available to the students here, okay? Um, and so we're gonna hold questions until the end if you don't mind, there'll be time. And we're gonna go ahead and get started with our counseling center. So I'd like Andrew to go ahead and come up. Thank you, Patty. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Andrew Poloy. I am one of three mental health counselors uh, in our counseling center, counseling services. Uh, there is uh, myself, uh, Dr. Frank Kuo, who's just joined us last week. So he's fairly new to the campus. Uh, he comes to us from Central Michigan University. And we're excited to have a new director with our counseling services. Uh, and um, the other staff that we have is uh, Masha, uh, who is currently uh, holding down the fort, so she couldn't be here. Uh, she's in the office. Uh, we'll also have two graduate interns with us, uh, staffed with us this year. Um, and so we have um, a pretty well-staffed office to be able to kind of meet our students' needs as they come in. Uh, we provide free, I can't say it enough, free uh, counseling services. A lot of uh, universities that you go to will work with either your insurance or uh, will have some sort of sliding scale uh, payment plan. Uh, but we're fortunate here at UH Hilo. Uh, where we don't have to charge our students uh, for our services. Uh, so they can come and see us for free. Um, we, um, like any other health professional provider out in the community, uh, really work on uh, health information, privacy, and confidentiality. Uh, so if your student comes in and sees us, we won't be able to disclose uh, any information about even them coming in to see our services. Uh, but there are some ways that you can kind of keep tabs on your student. Uh, when they're on campus, if you make a referral to our care team, uh, we have within the Division of Student Affairs, we have a care team coordinator uh, that if there is a student of concern and you make a referral to, uh, to her, you, you'll be able to kind of at least keep, it, um, uh, keep in touch that somebody is picking up that thread that uh, you had expressed uh, to our campus officials. We provide individual counseling, we provide group counseling, we provide couples counseling. Um, we even provide consultation, so if um, your student is concerned about a friend, you can always send them our way to kind of talk story and brainstorm to how to connect their friend to our services or to other services that that person might need. Uh, so we've definitely um, um, operated in that capacity to be able to consult with uh, friends, consult with faculty, uh, and other staff on campus. Hmm, what else do I want to say about our services? We, um, I'll kind of let uh, Patty go into some of the other fun stuff that we do to try and help uh, uh, with our prevention efforts on our campus. Our, we are located on the uh, Student Services Building. So it's that building just uh, ocean side of Campus Center. Uh, in Hawaii, we usually kind of tell directions, you're either going towards the ocean or you're going towards uh, the mountain. So it's Makai side of this building. Uh, we are open Monday to Fridays, um, 7.45 to 4.30, although our building does not technically open till 8 o'clock. Uh, and so uh, students usually can, can start coming into our building at 8 o'clock. Uh, there's a yellow card that I have up here uh, that you can feel free to grab uh, one of these cards uh, and give them to your students. It'll have our location uh, and our hours and our contact information on the back. Uh, it'll also have some crisis services. Uh, because we are open till, only until 4.30, uh, after hours, we use, uh, we use the Department of Health's uh, crisis line of Hawaii uh, or the National Suicide Hotline, uh, where a student can call in to try and get um, uh, some help if they are going through a crisis. Yeah, I think that's all I want to say. Uh, and if you have any questions, I'll be around at the end uh, to answer any of your questions. Okay, and next we're going to hear from Heather, who um, heads up our medical services department. Hey guys, how are you? So my name is um, Aloha. 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 All right, that's fun. <laughs> my name is Dr. Heather Hirata. I'm a family nurse practitioner. I am board certified, and I have my doctorate in nurse practice. I'm the director of medical services here at UH Hilo, and that's the place where your students would have brought in their TB and their MMRs to be cleared to go to classes. But we have all other kinds of services too. 
So we're there to um, support your students if they're sick. So any kind of illness, um, strep throat, mono, immunizations, um, injuries. Um, we do a lot of family planning stuff also. So, you know, they're in college. So condoms, birth control, um, IUDs. We have all pretty much every form of birth control, STI testing and stuff. Um, so all of those services are available to your students. Um, we also are um, a confidential resource. So I can't, if your student is over the age of 18, I can't really discuss particulars with you. You can always call my office to ask a general question like, hey, my student's feeling sick in the dorm. Can they come see you? What time are you open? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, if your student says, yes, you can talk to my mom about anything, or you can talk to my mom or dad about this part, or my auntie or my uncle, or whoever their guardian is, and they give me permission to do that, then we can talk all we want. Okay. But otherwise, it is kind of um, private and confidential for them. Your students, they're young adults now, and so they get that privilege. Okay. So that can be frustrating sometimes. So please don't get mad at me or my staff if we go, can't tell you that, <laughs> you know, but we can give you general information, okay? Um, what else do we do at medical services? We're mostly, I'm the only professional there. I have another professional um, fiscal person or an office person, and the rest of my clinic is actually run by student workers, which is a really fun opportunity for them, for anybody who's going into the healthcare field or any of the helping kind of professions. Um, so there are a lot of student workers there, um, and you know, they're learning. So please, you know, let your students know that I try to let them know too. And, you know, to give them a little bit of grace, they're learning too. And so, and it's also a lot of times for the first time students that are seeking medical care for the first time in their life without their parents, right? We've always taken our kids to the pediatrician. And this is going to be the first time they're like, Hey, I'm here by myself. And I got to figure out where I need to go if I'm not feeling well, or if I need a note for class, or if I need a physical, or things like that. So you can let them know that they can come and see us, yeah? But it's, sometimes it's kind of their first interaction with that. So they're kind of learning how to navigate those systems also. Um, we, at, at medical services, we get a $7 fee per student. I will have you know that the first medical clinic in a university opened up in about 1800 something, and the medical fee was $7. That's what mine is, okay? So I'm still getting $7 a student. And it is amazing. I also have a grant that I write and we, we get a big chunk of money from that too. But um, I don't get much money, so it's kind of amazing all the different services we have. We can test for flu, we can test for strep, we can test for glucose, we can test for hemoglobin. I, got all, I have more tests than they have at urgent care. And I know that because I work at urgent care. Um, so, and I also do work out in the community, which is kind of nice sometimes, okay? Because um, I have those community connections here. If your student needs a specialist or they need to be sent for an x-ray or they need to be sent for lab work, I have all of those connections here in the community. Or they can come and see me at night and on the weekends at urgent care. They can't find someone else. Um, so we get $7 a semester. We have a grant. I do charge insurance. If your student has insurance, we will try to charge the insurance. You will get billed for the copay, so that might happen, okay, just so you're aware. But if they don't have insurance, they're not sure if they have insurance. We try to charge your insurance and we don't get any money, then that's how it is. We're going to take care of them anyway, okay? So the little money we get in insurance reimbursements help me, again, to have all of those kind of services that we do have. So that's kind of how it runs in terms of medical stuff. Um, anything, yeah, pretty much I can do in the clinic would be free as long as I have it. If I needed to send your student to get lab work or to the ER or to maybe urgent care or to get an x-ray done, they would have to pay for those things or an ultrasound. So you need to be aware of that. I can only keep free what I have in my office. Yeah. Um, can't really think of much else. We're there Monday through Friday. Um, 8 a.m. to 4.30. We close for lunch from 12 to 1. We do recommend that your students make an appointment. I do try to keep slots open for walk-ins because people never know when they're going to get sick, but for regular kind of things that they need regular medication or maintenance with, and if they can make an appointment, that would be awesome. It makes life easier. Okay? And then I'll answer any questions at the end. I do have a brochure here um, about what our services are at the clinic, hours and stuff like that. We also do have a pharmacy um, on inside of my clinic. Um, he only comes on Fridays. 
<clears throat> but again, that's great for kind of like regular medicines. I don't have everything, but I have a good amount of stuff. So we might have stuff that you, um, that your student might need in, a, you know, so they don't even have to go somewhere else. Sometimes they do have to go out to an outside pharmacy. ADHD medication. I don't have that. Write a prescription. They got to go. I have my card up here too. Okay. You guys ever need to get in touch with me. All right. And we'll answer questions at the end. Thank you, Heather. Sure. All right, so I'm going to take you through a little bit, um, as Andrew was saying, the other things that are available to students through the student health and wellness programs. My name is Patty, by the way. I think I forgot to say that in the beginning. Um, and I am the coordinator and um, educator for student health and wellness programs. And our main... Um, our main option is really to spread outreach and awareness about the medical services and counseling services that are available on campus. So you'll, our, your students will always see us out and about um, just talking about the services that are available in both of those areas. Um, in addition to that, we put on events um, similar to the relaxation station, which is going on today and tomorrow from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. So make sure you come in and check that out. Um, and basically, it's just a nice, quiet area for students to come and just relax and de-stress. So we have art therapy in there. We'll have music therapy. Um, we teach breathing techniques so that the students can go back. And if they do get stressed out, they have that to go back to on a moment's notice. Um, we also have two different sizes of labyrinths. Um, and so that's another great walking kind of active meditation that the students can participate in. Something a little bit different than most of them know, um, but it's just a great way, again, to get yourself centered and to just get some clarity around things that might be bothering the students. Students. Um, so we have those available. We also do larger scale events um, for next month coming up is going to be suicide prevention month. So we have a lot of great activities that are going to be just around the awareness of suicide prevention um, and what we can do as a community to help those students um, that may be in need. Um, and just again to spread awareness. Um, so we've got a big event coming up on the 18th of September. We have another large event coming up on October 4th, which is going to be a movie screening. Um, we're going to be watching the movie Kissed by God, um, which is a, a about movie about Andy Irons. He was um, a wonderful surfer, um, very well known from Hawaii here, um, who actually had bipolar disorder and um, died due to opioid um, addiction. And so there's a lot of great things that we're going to be talking about with that movie. We'll have community partners, which we try to do a lot. We bring in community partners to do um, some testing and some other outreach so that the students know um, what is available to them throughout the community so resources will be available and then after this event we'll be doing a panel discussion too, opening it up for questions um, about any one of those areas mental health substance use um, and just you know information in general okay so those are just kind of some of the things that we do student health and wellness um, we post flyers around the campus so that students know exactly where to go and what's going on at any given time um, we're also partnering with the radio station so you'll start to hear commercials or the students will start to hear commercials um, so they'll they'll really be aware of all of the great things that are going on around campus Okay. We also have a website dedicated to um, the medical services, uh, counseling, and uh, student health and wellness. So it's really easy to get here. You just go to um, helo.edu slash wellness, and you'll come right to our main page here, which is what we're looking at. And then from here, you can take a look at our services, programs, and then there's also direct links right to medical services. So you can get a little bit more information about what Heather was talking about a few minutes ago. And then you also have the option to go to the counseling services as well. I'm sorry, I'm clicking on the wrong one. <laughs> there we go, there we go, okay. And then here's counseling services. Okay, we also have a lot of um, helpful links on the website. So if you have questions about anything else, we link into Title IX um, for that type of information. We have external links to screening tools um, for alcohol use and um, eating disorders and just general um, depression screening so that students have access to those types of um, pieces of information as well so they can take a look at what's going on within themselves and then decide if they need to maybe seek, count, seek counseling. Okay, So those uh, resources are there along with the hours, how to make appointments for both areas. Um, so it's a pretty robust website. If you have a few minutes, I suggest taking a look at it because there's a lot of great information. Okay. okay. 
So now I'd like to open it up for questions for both Andrew and Heather. And definitely let your students know about these websites. Um, oh, and I didn't tell you where I was located. I'm right downstairs um, on the second floor. So the stairs that came up through the glass doors in room 12. You can let your students know that I'm right above the cafeteria. So right in the campus section. So it's easy access. We're not trying to get you anywhere. But it's, you know, they don't know where things are. So <laughs> especially if they're new and they haven't been here or anything. So you can, if you can, you know, direct them to the website. You can always call us. We can let them know how to get a hold of us that has our information on it. If you want us to shoot us an email or something like that, we might not be able to talk about it. We definitely have people in our office that reach out to us. Okay, who has questions? Sir, I think you were first. It is, we do have flu shots. Um, they cost, I mean, $15 here. We don't take insurance for shots, and I'll tell you why, because I don't get any money back. <laughs> That's why, so I'll like, I'll buy an MMR for $65, and I'll charge insurance, and I'll get $15 back. And I only get $7 a student, so uh, it gets really expensive. Um, we do have a program usually at some point in time where we got uh, we do get some free flu vaccine. They are for people who are uninsured. So we keep the cost at just what the flu costs, which is fifteen dollars. So I don't even charge for administration or anything. We just charge them for how much the flu shot costs us. We do get those every year, so they can come and get it done here um, at my office for fifteen dollars, or um, they can go to any pharmacy and they'll usually take their insurance at the pharmacy. So that's just another option. But if they can't get off campus, yeah, we can do it for fifteen dollars. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm assuming it's a controlled substance, yeah, um, which is the only thing that won't usually cross state lines, yeah. So for things like ADHD medication, I don't usually do pain meds. I will, I will transfer them to a pain management specialist or something like that, but I'm just telling you. Um, I do do antidepressants, anti-anxiolytics, although I'm very, very... Mm, I don't like to give a lot of the anti-anxiolytics out, but you know what I mean? But we do do antidepressants also. So I do um, prescribe those. But for um, things like ADHD medication, um, students um, have to sign a contract. I need their records. They need to see me every month. They have to behave. I've had people scream at me and my staff. Um, so I make them sign this contract, okay? Because I want them to also understand the appropriate way to seek medical services, right? in the world because this is usually their first contact, yeah. Um, but yeah, absolutely. And then I just see them every month and they go to a local pharmacy. Yeah, that's no problem. We do it all the time. Oh, sorry. So my question is, is how long, like if, like if a student is one of you, mm -hmm. how hard is it to get in to see me? It is not usually very hard to get in to see me. So um, we usually triage what's going on. So if somebody is acutely ill or something, they're really, I mean, students get really worried about stuff, you know? Um, maybe it's not even that serious, but I know they're worried. You know what I mean? Or they're like, my mom's worried. And, you know, so I try to, you know, like I said, we keep openings open um, for um, walk-ins, okay? So that's kind of based on acuity. And then appointments, I think, you know, I'm open next week. I mean... Yeah, they can get an appointment on Monday or Tuesday. <laughs> um, CBC and stuff, like I said, they, I, can, I can write for it. I send them out to the lab. Um, so they have to go to a separate place to go to the lab. They need their insurance or they have to pay for it. They also do give us a 50% discount for our students if they don't have insurance at the lab. So we have some community resources like that that we use. Um, and then I get the results. So yes, we can absolutely do that. But we don't draw blood here on campus. So I sent them to the clinical labs, which is actually in walking distance. It's near Hilo Shopping Center. They could walk there. Go ahead. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
Right. So you can come and talk to me downstairs about those kind of specific things. I have to look at what that situation is, what the medication is, and I'm sure you don't want that information here. So, but we can definitely discuss that and work on it. I'll do what I can. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, what do you mean for for labs? It's clinical labs here. We have clinical and diagnostic labs. Those are the only ones here in Hawaii. I don't know if they correspond to those on the mainland. Sometimes things do correspond. You know what I mean? It's like a parent company that has those. So I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes if you're out of state, you have to pay for it up front and they might reimburse you. Yeah. It's definitely funky with insurance. Um, it gets even funkier when it's international students, you know? So sometimes like at urgent care, we don't take a lot of out of state insurances. So they have to pay to come and see. So they pay $125 to come see me there. They get to come see me here for free. So, <laughs> but if we have to do something, that's where it, but the hospital does take everyone. So at the emergency room. Um, sure. So on our website is a consent to release sign form. So you, you or your student, if they're over 18, has to consent to release um, ask your place to release to me. So there's two ways. I have, I have two forms on there. One's for me to release to other people and one's for other people to release records to me. They might be able to depending on what it is. Yeah, absolutely. Because most of them are CVSs now, so they can transfer within. I mean, I call prescriptions to all other kind of states. You know, it just depends, though, on what it is. Not controlled substances. Yeah. It, that would be to which pharmacy you want. It depends. It, if you're talking about my pharmacy, we should make sure that I have that medication because I have limited medication. It's a small pharmacy. Mostly antibiotics, birth control, stuff like that. Sure. I have to navigate my own website now. So I didn't know there was a test involved. <laughs> Need to go get one of my students. <laughs> okay, let's look on. Let's look on the side forms. There we go mandatory health requirements, MMR exemption, pharmacy, MMR pharmacy list, consent for release of medical information. Um, Consent for treatment of minors, consent for release within the UH system. So why don't you click on that one? No, the, no, the other one. Uh, no. Yep. I believe there's two forms on here. I might be wrong. So this is authorizing us to release to someone else. Going down. Dear God, please be on here and don't make me a liar. Yes, here's from, <laughs> from other people to us. Okay, please make sure you fill this out properly. You do need to initial all of these, say whether or not under here should be continuation of care um, or what records you want sent to me. You can, you know, just last year's records, just stuff on, I don't know, acne medicine. <laughs> um, you need to, this one, you would send it to them and then they would fax stuff to me. Um, they could sign this, yes, so that you can have access to their medical records, correct. Um, they can do it anytime, yeah. Yeah, as, you know, if, if something comes up. They can file drop it to me. I mean, they can email it to me. My email is not secure, so I have my own personal email here. That's my email. And then I have a clinic email. But on our thing also, I think if you go back, it tells you about file dropping, which is just a secure way to do it. It's all encrypted that way. I can't stop people from emailing me things, and they do. Um, but I need to let you know that, that the file drop is the preferred method um, for any kind of medical stuff. Well, it is, yeah, it is HIPAA compliant, yeah. I'm just saying when they sh when they just send it to me, my email is not HIPAA compliant. Yeah. But I, you know, I can't stop people from sending me stuff. That's their choice. It's their thing. Yeah. 
yeah, you can fax it for sure. Faxes is HIPAA compliant also because it's directly in my office. It's all safe. And then we work a lot with counseling. So um, counseling will do, um, uh, they can do ADHD um, assessments. Um, if we had a new person, we don't have that too much, but sometimes it comes up depression or anxiety assessments and then they'll will we have to get consent to release to each other um, unless a student just brings it to me which is one way for them to do it um, but then we can talk about cases and um, so he might do the depression screening I might have a meeting with the student um, do my assessment and if they wanted to start medication or something like that that would be an option for them so we work very closely together um, with counseling and partner up so we can keep the kids great. <laughs> so, um, thank you. I forgot. Um, we do not have, um, we offer a wide range. I'm going to pull up a list of the wide range of different groups that we offer. We usually send out in like a Google form at the beginning of the semester to gauge interest. Uh, to, uh, for have stu uh, to have students sign up for our, the different groups that we can offer. Uh, and then from there, we'll generate, uh, we'll populate the list and then email them and then we'll start screening them and then we'll start running groups if we have enough members. Not yet, not yet, yeah. Uh, I was planning on send, uh, sending it out uh, next week. Yeah. Because I was afraid it will, it will just kind of get shuffled, uh, lost, yeah, with uh, other things. So if you go on our webs, scroll down, please. There you go. Under services, uh, support groups. And these are some of the groups that we've run in the past. We also run some classes. Uh, and we call them classes because there's still a lot of stigma around mental health, uh, seeking mental health services. Uh, so we kind of, you know, we call them classes and workshops and they think they're getting a credit for it, but they're not really getting a credit for it. Uh, but, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And some of the workshops that we, we do host, uh, are really, really good on their resume. So like safe talk and QPR, those are suicide prevention gatekeeper training, uh, which, um, yeah, will look great on a resume, especially if you're going to the helping field. Uh, so the, yeah, that's a list of some of the groups that uh, we run, uh, like L the LGBTQ plus support group, um, uh, autism spectrum uh, support group, non-traditional student support group. We do have a lot of non-traditional students on our campus. Uh, women support group support with, for students with disabilities. Uh, that's the other office that we work closely with uh, is with our disability services. Uh, so if a student is coming in and looking for some reasonable accommodations, uh, disability services can refer them to us and we can make those assessments, uh, provide a diagnosis and then uh, give those to disability services to make those reasonable accommodations for the student. Any other questions? There's also a tab here if you're ever curious and, and uh, want to come back to our website uh, is we have a tab dedicated for parents and families uh, which also has some resources about the transition year as well as uh, frequently asked questions or so, so top 10 things you need to know about us and the services that we provide uh, and then we have some common questions that parents and families have asked uh, us in the past we'll kind of try to populate that list uh, for easy access of that information any other questions? Yes. We had a counselor that was trained in EMDR. She just left us. Um, I am not trained in EMDR. Masha is not trained in EMDR. I don't know if Frank's, uh, no, Frank's not. So none of our staff currently are trained in EMDR. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, we, we do work closely with folks in the community. I know there are EMDR providers in the community. Uh, so if they're looking for specialized treatment, uh, we can make a referral uh, out to the community, but most community providers will require insurance. Yeah, very little of them do uh, out of pocket. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's
Any other questions, comments? I think so. Uh, let me just uh, understand. Uh, Five hundred four. I'm assuming is like a individualized education plan that uh, provides. Uh, yeah. Now, yeah. Um, you can definitely send them to us. I think most of the time, uh, if students had five hundred four in high school, they're more work closely with our disability services. So that's Susan Sirachi is her name, the Director of Disability Services is Susan Sirachi, and she is also um, over in the um, same area where counseling is, and um, she just needs the records, and then she can let you know what services are available for your students. No problem. Um, so, it's a bit, Complicated. Um, yeah, so she. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, we may or may not advertise for that position depending. We'll find out in December what we want to do. I'll leave it at that. Um, Andrew and then we have Masha and then we have the two interns so even though yeah they did um, lose one to having fun on a sabbatical I don't know what she's doing but um, <laughs> she may be back and she was lovely so we kind of are hoping she comes back but it's still they're they're really well covered I think over there Which is nice because then they have multiple people to go through. Because you know, counseling is very personal. So, if and you know, let your student know that you know, if they see one person, if they come to see me and I tell them that too, they're like, oh, I tried to go see blah 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 counseling, and you know, it, it just didn't didn't work. And I'm like, well, there's other folks up there, so go up and see someone else. They don't care counseling. They don't get they don't get their little feelings hurt. <laughs> they know how it works, you know. <laughs> so if they don't jive with someone, then tell them they all go check someone else out up there. Maybe there's a better match. Yeah. So at least they have choices. Unlike me, they're just stuck with me. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. If there's no more questions, really appreciate your time, and I hope your students have a great year at UH Hilo. We really appreciate you um, entrusting them um, into our care while you're not here. <laughs> and I'll, I'll do a good job. I have seven kids, all four of them. My four older ones graduated from here. I graduated from here. He graduated from here. So <laughs> she's, gonna, she's going here. So, you know, all of my, I have seven children all together. Four have graduated already. My other three are going to go to school here. So I love you, Chilo. Um, I think it's a great opportunity. Um, for young people or all people to have an education and I think it has a really nice community. So we just appreciate you. All right.